Let's now have a look at some of these methods in a little bit more detail. And let's start with road segmentation. How can we segment all the road pixels in an image? The answer to this question today is to use deep convolutional neural networks for image segmentation, where the task is given an RGB input image um, to predict for every pixel in that input image a semantic class label. And that semantic class label could be, for example, sky here in gray or trees or vegetation in yellow or buildings in red or sidewalk in blue or road in purple. And so you can see that for every pixel we have a classification problem to solve. How can we solve this? We've already seen convolutional neural networks. Convolutional neural networks are basically the left part of this image here where we take the input and we apply or we interleave convolution layers with pooling layers to successively shrink the spatial resolution of the input of the feature maps down to a, a single value. And uh, this is used, for example, for image classification. Now what's added in semantic segmentation algorithms, and for example, in this one of the very first works, Segnet, the the conference paper appeared two years earlier than this. What's added here is to have a, a deconvolutional part, a decoder. So this is called the encoder, which shrinks the spatial resolution. Now we have a decoder that then successively increases the spatial resolution again until we reach the original resolution. So it's sometimes also called a U-net because it has this U-shape or an hourglass network. And often it has not only convolution pooling and upsampling layers, convolution is in blue here, pooling is green, red is upsampling, but it also has skip connections where information from the encoder layers at the respective resolution are directly channeled forward to the respective resolution of the decoder layers. There's many different variants of this type of networks, but in a nutshell, they are kind of working all the same as indicated here on this picture. And to train these networks, to train the parameters, to obtain the parameters of these networks, what we do is we use standard empirical risk minimization. We define a loss function, we have labeled images, we have a data set with input output pairs, and then we can define a loss for every pixel now, a classification loss. And that's of course a standard cross entropy loss for every pixel of each image that we have in our training set. And then we can train this model um, such that the model tries to predict the correct semantic class label according to what the annotators have annotated. Now here's an example. This is from the original paper. You can play also the video. You can see what the algorithm produces. You can also see it is not working super well, but you can already get the gist of where the road should be and where the cars are, etc. This is one of the very first works for semantic segmentation. Of course, in the last six years, the performance of these approaches has improved quite dramatically. And so I will show you also some newer results. So here's an example that's only a few months, a few years later than the original Segnet paper that combines the semantic segmentation with a conditional random field not going into the details, but the idea is basically to make the semantic segmentation coherent in space and time, where we have a dense, densely connected CRF that spans both space and time. And we have the unary potentials here in that CRF that are basically determining the, um, 
well this is basically for every pixel which semantic class should be that pixel sh should be labeled with and then we have these pairwise connections that which tell us well if they are close in space and time then they should probably be the same class label <clears throat> so semantic segmentation is formulated as an optimization problem over multiple frames and there's temporal and spatial smoothness constraints here in these pairwise potentials via a fully connected CRF. And the results of this, despite this works from 2016, are quite amazing. You can see they are very clean compared to what I've shown you before. And they are also in many cases, this is on a Cityscapes dataset, quite correct. You can also see the ambiguity here, like this area is really hard to distinguish for both the humans and the machine, if it should be a road or if it should be sidewalk or something else. You can of course also apply the idea of semantic segmentation in 3D directly by parsing the input images through a semantic segmentation network, for example, and at the same time computing a local map using SLAM techniques and then fusing this information into a semantic 3D map. And this has been done in this work here, for example. It's also one of the earliest works in this area where you can see that such a voxelized semantic output representation is obtained. Okay, and uh, Finally, what I want to show you also is that, of course, it's also possible to define the semantic class labels specific to the self-driving problem. So, for example, here, the segmentation with respect to the road is not only with respect to the road in general, but it's with respect to the particular lanes. So here, a semantic segmentation model has been trained to not just distinguish road from the rest, but to separate the road into the ego lane in green and the uh, parallel lane here in orange as well as the opposite lane in yellow. And you can see that the algorithm does a reasonable job in distinguishing these, these different lanes here. 